Good morning. Welcome to all uh, who have joined us this morning. Welcome to those uh, who have joined the worship channel of the First Presbyterian Church of Coal Valley and the Beulah Presbyterian Church of Orion. Let us pause for a time of personal and silent meditation. Living Lord of love and truth, we praise your holy name for your living presence among, among us and ask, Lord, that you'd be with us during this time of worship and in every endeavor of faith as we gather and uh, serve you as your precious servants and children. In Jesus' name, we ask your blessing. Amen. Please stand. I will sing your steadfast love forever, O God, with my mouth. I will proclaim your faithfulness to all generations. Your steadfast love is established forever. Your faithfulness is as firm as the heavens. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Heavenly Father, hear our prayer. We come humbly before you, knowing that you are our glorious God, the Father of all generations, and we ask that you'd help our hearts to be thankful for all of the blessings that come before us, that we might know you on every day that we walk in your presence and with every step of faith that we take. We ask your blessing and we pray in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us celebrate with the hymn of praise number one. Joyful, joyful. Joyful, joyful, we adore thee, God of glory, Lord of love. Hearts unfold like flowers before thee, opening to the sun above. Melt the clouds of sin and sadness, drive the dark of doubt away. Giver of immortal gladness, fill us with the light of day. All thy works with joy surround the earth and heaven reflect thy rays. Stars and angels sing around the center of unbroken praise. Field and forest, vale and mountain, flowery meadow, flashing sea. Chanting bird and flowing fountain call us to rejoice in thee. Thou art giving and forgiving, ever blessing, ever blessed. Wellspring of the joy of living, ocean depth of happy rest. Thou art Father, Christ our brother, all who live in love are thine. Teach us how to love each other. Other, lift us to the joy divine. Mortals join the happy chorus which the morning stars began. Father, love is reigning o'er us. Brother, love binds man to man. Ever singing, march we onward. Victors in the midst of strife. Joyful music leads us sunward in the triumph songs of life. Amen. Please stand. 
please be seated. We come now to the place where we make our hearts ready to confess our sins before the Lord using the unison, not the unison, the prayer of confession that is printed in your bulletin. Let us focus our hearts now on confessing our sins before the Lord. God of, God of peace, without your love in Jesus Christ, we are hopelessly distant from you. You know the brokenness of our living and the emptiness of our pursuits, the futility of our hope for fulfillment apart from your power and your love. We confess you, our frailty, our great need, our sinful condition. Redeem us as holy, uh, as the whole, as holy one, by saving by the saving power of that uh, raised from death, your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. In Christ, make us one humanity, at peace with each other and with you. Join together in the Spirit to be a dwelling place for you, our God. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. And so, my friends, hear the good news. We have been saved only in hope of splendor, which is in store for us. Friends, believe the good news. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Now I'd like to, well, since there are no children, we're still going to have JLK, so if anybody's watching on the tape, uh, they can. We would ask the children to stay in their spot. Uh, you can see I brought a battery with me today. And uh, the reason I brought a battery, have you ever had a, a situation where you had something that ran on batteries and it just didn't work because the battery was dead? Well, that reminds me of something that Paul says in the 13th chapter of Corinthians. It says, it, without love, we are nothing. Without love, we are a clanging uh, symbol. We are nothing unless we have love in our hearts. And so our lives without love, our journeys without love is like your controller for your game without a battery. It's nothing. It doesn't do you any good at all. No matter what we do, we have to have love in our hearts. No matter what we do, it has to be guided by love. No matter what we do, love has to be the driving force, the battery that keeps our journey as children of God going. So remember that as you go forward in your day. You can do a lot of things without love in your heart, but without love in your heart, you don't have Jesus in your heart. Without Jesus in your heart, Paul says, we are nothing. What we do is nothing. We have to do all that we do, achieve all that we do with uh, the love of God as the battery that gives our lives energy and keeps moving our lives forward. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for that blessing of your love, for the Holy Spirit's uh, presence here in this place. We ask that your love might be the driving force that keeps us close to our great God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Tracy and I want you to take a little trip with us south to Nashville, back to 1948, when the Acoff Rose Opryland Publishing Company published this little ditty by Hank Williams, Sr. I wandered so aimless, life filled with sin. I wouldn't let my dear Savior in. Then Jesus came like a stranger in the night. Praise the Lord, I saw the light. I saw the light, I saw the light. No more in darkness, no more in night. Now I'm so happy, no sorrow inside. Praise the Lord, I saw the light. Just like a blind man, I wandered along. Worries and fears I claimed for my 
Then like the blind man that God gave back his sight, praise the Lord, I saw the light, I saw the light, I saw We come now to the place during our time of worship where we open our hearts to the time that we spend in prayer. A uh, couple of things that I want to call to your attention. Oh, we want to keep uh, Kay Janicek's brother-in-law in our prayers. He is seriously ill with the COVID virus in the hospital and just right uh, the next step from a ventilator. So we want to keep Kay Janicek's brother-in-law in our prayers. Uh, Carol McKenzie has asked for our prayers. She underwent a procedure, and her brother Bob is going through uh, treatments for brain cancer. So I want to keep both of those in our prayers. Uh, Connie Moore has a case of vertigo and uh, uh, is in need of our prayers. She is hoping to be back at work on Tuesday. Uh, Pat Blazer, I talked to Pat, I believe, Friday, and uh, she is just a week to the point where she doesn't get out of bed hardly at all and so and doesn't have much of an appetite. So we should keep Pat in our prayers. Ken and Carol Bridgeford should be in our prayers. Uh, Dawn uh, Schellinger as she goes through cancer treatments. Uh, Harry Fink, Jerry Stogsdill, Trish Dudek, uh, Deanne Sherlock, Tracy Tucker, Jeff Sweetland, and Sam Waldron and Ed Martin, and those from the Beulah congregation, we're going to keep in our prayers. Uh, uh, Stephen Taylor, uh, deployed in Kuwait, Robert DeVries, Clint Dykoff, Gary Lovestead, Dylan Preston, and Jackie Williams, along with the missionaries from each congregation and the shut-in folks from each congregation. And in general, we want to keep all of those who are affected by this new normal that we have presented before us uh, because of the coronavirus. Are there any uh, other joys or concerns that should come before us? Carrie? So Kerry, in case you didn't hear, uh, told about how he went to the DMV in Alito and there was a man who lived the kindness of his faith by buying bottled water for everybody that was waiting in the line at the DMV. So that's a joy that touched Kerry's and Ann's heart. Are there other joys or concerns? Kate? So uh, we got uh, visitors from Orion for the Blankenship or Oregon, I said Orion, I didn't mean that. <laughs> that wouldn't be a very big trip, would it? Uh, so Katie and, and, her, and her son are visiting uh, the Blankenship family from Oregon. Any others? Let's bow our heads in prayer. Heavenly Father, we open our hearts to all of the blessings that come before us for your creation and all its beauty and all its splendor and all of its glory. We come humbly before you recognizing that we are weak and you are strong. And we pray especially for those who have needs on this day. We pray for uh, Kay's brother-in-law as he suffers from COVID. We pray that you just keep him uh, well and bring healing to him. Uh, we ask that you be with uh, Carol McKinsey and her brother, Bob, as Carol went through a test earlier this week and Bob is going through treatments for brain cancer. We ask that you be with Connie as she goes through vertigo. 
Pat, as she just gets weaker, uh, just uh, give her an appetite and some strength. We ask that you'd be with Ken and Carol as they continue to struggle uh, uh, with health issues and uh, uh, issues of, of, of grief. We ask, Lord, that you would uh, uh, be with Don Schillinger and Harry Fink and Jerry Stogsdill. Just wrap your arms around them that... Uh, uh, their hearts might be healed and mended and brought uh, with a new light because of your presence. Uh, we ask that you'd uh, be with Trish and Deanne and Tracy and Jeff and Sam and Dr. Ed. Just wrap your arms around all of these, your children, and not only these, but all of your children, that we might live as a unity in faith and spirit. We ask that from the Beulah congregation you would be present with uh, Stephen Taylor, Robert DeVries, Clint Dykoff, and Gary Lovestead. Just uh, be warm in their hearts that whatever the need that they have might be tended to by, by your gracious and glorious hand. That you'd be with Dylan Preston and Jackie Williams. Be with all of our shut-in folks that especially when they are isolated because of COVID, you might know what their needs are and help both congregations to reach out to those who are not able to get out, uh, that they might not feel quite so isolated. We ask, Lord, that you'd be present in our community. We give you thanks for uh, a kind heart uh, to uh, see to the needs of all those waiting at the DMV for uh, Carrie and Ann, uh, we praise you for that joy. We ask, Lord, also that you would be with the Blankenships as they uh, receive a visit from Katie and her son. Just watch over them uh, and help them when they return to travel safely. Uh, and we ask, Lord, that you'd watch over each one who uh, is in the world and encounters the possibility of COVID-19. And we ask that you would be with those who are affected economically and uh, those whose peace of mind is effective. Just uh, uh, be in each of our hearts that we might uh, be united in handling this situation together, uh, holding one another in our prayers and uh, standing shoulder to shoulder, of course, at a social distance, uh, so, so that we might weather this storm uh, knowing that you are leading the way. In Jesus' name, we ask that your blessing would be upon us uh, on this day and forevermore. Amen. The passage of scripture that we share today comes from Psalm 139, and instead of verses 1 through 12, we are going to share verses 1 through 18. May God's blessing accompany us as we share the word of the Lord. O oh Lord, you have searched me. Yeah. O oh Lord, you have searched me and you know me. You know when I sit and when I rise. You perceive my thoughts from afar. You discern my going out and my lying down. You are familiar with all of my ways. Before, my, before a word is on my tongue, you know it completely, O Lord. You hem me in behind and before. You have laid your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful, too lofty for me to attain. Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go up to the heavens, you are there. If I make my bed in the depths, you are there. If I rise on the wings of the dawn, if I settle on the far side of the sea, even there your hand will guide me, your right hand will hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness will hide me, 
and the light become as night around me, even the darkness will not be dark to you. The night will shine like the day, for darkness is as light to you. For you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. My frame was not hidden from you. When I was made in the secret place, when I was woven together in the depths of the earth, your eyes saw my unformed body. All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. How precious to me are your thoughts, O God! How vast is the sum of them! Were I to count them, they would outnumber the grains of the sand. When I awake, I am still with you. Here ends this blessed reading coming today from the word of the Lord, the 129th Psalm. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Heavenly Father, direct our path that we might be your obedient children, that your grace and mercy might live in our hearts by the power of the Holy Spirit, that your goodness might shine a light before us for all the world to see and for us to follow. In Jesus' name, we ask your blessing. Amen. Today, I want us to think about a characteristic of God's greatest gift, the gift of love, a gift that perhaps we don't think about often enough. It's important for us to be thoughtful in our love relationships. Love requires that we not only have a brain, but we, in fact, decide to use the brain that we have and think about what we are doing when it comes to following the, the path that God has given us. The thing that I really want us to remember today is that love is thoughtful. Now, we tend to think of thoughtfulness in our everyday lives as being considerate and polite, and that's definitely part of what biblical thoughtfulness uh, encompasses. But that sort of thoughtfulness washes over into what it means to be selfless. I believe selflessness is the root of what it means to be biblically thoughtful in our journeys of faith. Love thinks. I didn't say love stinks. I said love thinks. Love is thoughtful and intentional about what direction uh, your servanthood in the name of the Lord uh, takes. Love is a much more fulfilling endeavor when it's not just a feeling of emotion that is inside your hearts. If you think about it, it's easy to send the message, I don't care, if we don't think about what actions and words really communicate what is in our heart to those who are around us. If I would have thought about someone close to me, I would have remembered to send a birthday card or a get well card or an anniversary card. If I am careful and I think about the way that I intend to love, then I put important opportunities to express my love at the forefront. Put them on the calendar. Make sure that the gifts of every child of God are recognized, that every child of God is affirmed by the love that we put forward. If I make the choice to think about how I'm going to love my neighbors, it would not only be in my heart that I admire somebody's achievements, but I would be intentional about telling them, I admire what you have done. I would affirm that I admire the faith that they have showed in a particular context. If I were intentional about thinking about how 
I love, then I would sit down each day and think prayerfully about the ways that I can not only feel the love of God, but the ways that I can express the love of God and share the love of God with all of those around me, those who are like me and those who maybe are not right in my circle, are not exactly like me. Thinking about and planning the way you're going to be obedient to that wonderful call to love your neighbors just as much as you love yourself is what it means to be a thoughtful child of God. Now, being thoughtful in this way seems rather obvious and elementary. But it's so easy for us to fall asleep at the switch when it comes to being a thinking child of God. We tend to gravitate toward the easy path in life, sitting in the easy chair, the self-centered path in life, the life that cares about what is in our own little bubble. It's human nature to be that way, to establish daily routines around our personal needs and our personal desires. So unless we stop and think, unless we are thoughtful, unless we are intentional and ask ourselves the questions about how we can show others that we love them, to show others how we love them. Unless we ask the question about how we can show God's love toward our neighbors, our default pattern is that we will do it the way we did it yesterday and the day before. And very often our default pattern of living tends to center around who? Ourselves. Rather than thinking about God's call rather than thinking about what God would have us to do to be true to the call to love our neighbors just as much as we love ourselves. We do what we do often because that is what we always do. Often we are where we are because we have done no thinking about where God wants us to be. No inquire as to what God's plan is. No thought about how we might say, I love you, to our neighbors on any given day, in any given time. How do we get started then to being more thoughtful about our journeys with faith, in faith? What are the tools that we can use to be better at being really thoughtful in our faith journeys. Well, the way to get started is to ask God's help. Without God's help, we're like that dead battery we talked about with the children. We're doomed before we start because without God, we are nothing. Wake up each morning and ask God what he would have us to do in order to fulfill that great command, love your neighbor. What would God have us to do in order to be more thoughtful about our love? Don't use what you did yesterday as a guide, unless what you did yesterday was really cool, I guess. Think about what you will do in terms of how you can say, I love you, with actions and words, and not just hold that love deep inside your heart and do nothing to express that feeling, to shine that light on the path of your neighbor. What are the tools? Well, the Bible. What does the Bible say I should do? Find out for yourself what it says in the Bible about loving your neighbor rather than taking the word of others. Prayer. Seeking the Holy Spirit's guidance as a way to find out what God wants you to do, how God wants you to say, I love you. A calendar can be very helpful to remember to say, I love you. A journal can be a unique way to discover opportunities to say, I love you, that you may have missed, or to affirm 
those times in your journey when you didn't miss an opportunity to say I love you and then do that again. God has given you a gift. And that gift is the most important tool that you can have to becoming a more thoughtful child of God. Your ability to think. Your ability to think about what God wants you to say, what God wants you to do. Your brain. Don't leave home without it. In Psalm 139, 16 to 18, it says, All of the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. How precious are your thoughts to me. How vast is the sum of them. If I could count them, they would outnumber the sand. You, thinking about love is precious to God. God wants us to think about what his plan is in our journeys. God wants us to think about what his purpose is for our servanthood. God wants us to think in terms of his eternal purpose rather than our own. In terms of furthering his kingdom, rather than thinking in terms of our world. God wants our thoughts to be centered on him. How precious are your thoughts to me, is what he says. Thinking about how we could love, thinking about how we should love, and then living the response after we have been thoughtful about that, that is the kind of love that truly brings honor to God. And bringing honor to God is what our God-given purpose is. Our days belong to him. We must never forget that. Our days belong to God, not ourselves. Love thinks about God. Love is thoughtful about ways that bring God glory. The love of God requires a thoughtful and intentional approach to being obedient and answering the call to love God and to love our neighbors just as much as we love ourselves. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you have given us an ability to picture your love and to ponder how we might carry that love through to our neighbors, to those who are like us and to those who are different from us, those who we are close to and those who we barely know. Whatever it is God wants us, you want us to be thoughtful about our call to love. Guide us by the blessing of the Holy Spirit in that endeavor on this day and forever, in Jesus' name we pray, amen. Let's celebrate God's peace in our hearts now uh, as we listen to the song number 498, I've Got Peace Like a River. in my 
We come now to the place uh, where we share the announcements that need to be shared to keep things going along. We want to make sure we remember uh, Kinsey's graduation open house today from 1 to 3. Uh, there's also a sheet of paper by the offering plate back there. The scouts, who we are the sponsoring organization for, didn't get the opportunity to sell mulch as they usually do. So they are having a little bit of a fundraiser. So if you need some yard work done, uh, you can call the number on that sheet, have them come, and then make a donation to the scouts. There, so you can look at the sheet that's right next to the offering plates there, and if you need some yard work done, they aren't going to do any inside work, but outside work, and then just ask a donation to the scouts to help further uh, their, uh, their uh, endeavors. Uh, let's see. Am I forgetting anything? Anything else needs to be... Carolyn? Carolyn? So you're making prayer shawls, right? Yeah. So if when is it meeting again so I can tell people? August 6th and August 13th at the church. What time? 12.30 to 2.30. So we're starting to meet again. Okay. So uh, if, if you didn't hear, uh, Hannah and Jessica, uh, Hannah's already home and Jessica will be coming home Tuesday. Okay, any other announcements? Let's prepare then for this morning's offering. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the blessing of all good gifts that come into our hearts and into our lives. We ask that you'd help us just to be thankful for God's presence and God's directive love 
Help us that we might use all the gifts that come into our congregation and into our personal journeys as gifts from God, that we might dedicate our lives to peace and love and joy and all other great spiritual gifts. In Jesus' name, we give you thanks. Amen. Let us celebrate God's presence in our hearts, uh, celebrating with the hymn number 554, I'll Fly Away. Some glad morning when this life is o'er, I'll fly away to a home on God's celestial shore. I'll fly away. This life have gone, I'll fly away. Like a bird from prison bars have flown, I'll fly away. I'll fly away, oh glory, I'll fly away. When I die, hallelujah, by and by. I'll fly away. Just a few more weary days and then I'll fly away to a land where joy shall never end. I'll fly away. By and by, I'll fly away. Please stand. Grace and mercy and peace be in your hearts this day and forevermore as we are powered and motivated by the blessing of the Holy Spirit on this day and on every day that we walk in the presence of our great God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen.